Welcome back to the channel guys, it is me, AD Summer Full Force. So today guys, we are here to do our Conference League semi-final predictions. Guys, Conference League time, Conference League guys. So let me know your Conference League predictions in the comments below guys. Remember guys, if you're new around here, consider that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And like I said guys, hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I go live. And we're going to be doing our Conference League semi-finals guys, which should be very, very interesting. Let's start with the first match here. The first match we got is a West Ham versus AZ Alkmaar. Now, for me, guys, for this one, what I think is really, really fascinating to me is AZ Alkmaar. This is a team that West Ham shouldn't underestimate. AZ Alkmaar is a very well-organized team. They have a very, they got some good players. Pavid Elise comes to mind. He's very notable. Matthew Ryan, of course. And what I really like about this AZ Alkmaar team is that they're very, very strong. Now, for West Ham, this is a huge opportunity. This season has been a huge disappointment for West Ham. If you're a West Ham fan, you must be disappointed how the season has been. You're battling relegation, you know, and this is pretty much your only chance to redeem the season. Like, if you win the Conference League, and that even if you guys do go to the championship, which I don't think West Ham will go down, but let's just say they hypothetically do, you will still have the Conference League to back off of. And that's the thing is that for David Moyes here, he's under a huge dilemma here. Do I want to get European trophy, but do I want to survive? That's a tr tricky thing for West Ham. And we saw how, we're seeing how good they have been. I believe they're the only club that hasn't lost a single game in the Conference League. I think every other club remaining in the competition has lost a game. You know, which is very commendable for West Ham. And the issue with West Ham, I've noticed, is that it's not really that their defense has been bad. It's just the goal scoring has been really, really bad. They just haven't been scoring enough goals. Lucas Bequetta has just not been as prolific as we expect him to be. You know, making the same transfer from Leon. Rodrigo Antonio has not really been the same as he was last season. Then obviously Skamaka has he struggled at times, not really acclimatized very well after making that big move from Small Swallow. And I just think that for West Ham in particular, man, how are they going to do this? Because AZ Alkmaar, man, as I said, they're a very, very good, they're a good, decent team, man. And they have some good players that comes to mind that will cause issue. Now, injuries didn't take note of all. Vladimir Kofal is going to be out. Kurt Zuma is going to be out. And Skamaka is going to be out. As for AZ Alkmaar, you got Sam Westerlid, Jesper Carlson, Danny Duet, and Bruno Martins Indy. I think the thing with AZ Alkmaar is that the second leg's at home. That is very, very massive. And the thing is with AZ Alkmaar, they're fourth position right now in the Eredivisie, and so they're fighting for um they're fighting for Europa League because as things stand, they're not going to get Europa League through the league, you know, because the third and fourth place teams don't get Europa League; they get Conference League. Um, so I just think that for me, it's going to be very interesting because both teams are not going to qualify to Europa League by the league; they're going to have to do it by this competition. And that's the thing that's really interesting with this AZ Alkmaar team, as I said, and you know, players to look out for, obviously, as I mentioned earlier. Matthew Ryan, then obviously you have, um, um, then you obviously have um, Pavel Elise is also good. Then you got Jens Odegaard who's been good, Barassi, um, you know, and I just feel like for this AZ Alkmaar team, man, is that it's just gonna matter how much motivation will West Ham get. If West Ham feel their strongest team, which I expect them to, then I think they'll beat AZ Alkmaar. Now, if they field their second string team. Then, because we saw in the first leg how they were unfortunate that the first leg was away. This time around, the first leg is not away. It's at home. So West Ham have to take all the initiative to win this game. Because we saw how AZ Alkmaar was able to come back against Anderlecht in the second leg. So, you know, AZ Alkmaar could still do it. And that's the thing for West Ham is that try to win the first leg by three or more clear goals. So that way, that even if AZ Alkmaar do a comeback in the second leg, they only do it by 2-0, right? It's a very tricky game to go... go game to call guys and it really depends on how both teams prioritize this but i'm going to make the assumption that west ham will give it their strongest team and i think they're going to go for this because at the end of the day it is european silverware it'll be west ham's first trophy in a very long time and i just feel like for me david Moyes is under immense pressure and i feel like if he wins this trophy he'll be given the um he'll be given some leeway you know and i think the it will buy time because if he doesn't win the conference like and it goes down he for sure is getting relegated that i mean sorry not relegated he for sure will get sacked. But like I said, man, it's going to be very interesting. So I'm going to have West Ham to narrowly advance. But like I said, guys, do not rule up AZ Alkmaar. Because like I said, guys, if AZ Alkmaar can score away in the West Ham Stadium, um, then they can get something and make it to the second leg. But as I said, the key for West Ham is to win the first leg. Because if they lose the first leg, guys, 
it's done. I, I believe it's done. Even if they draw, I I will say it's done. I think Isaac Alkamar will beat them in the second leg if they don't win the first leg. So, yeah, man. Um, there's that. Let's move on to the next game, man. Next game we have here is Fiorentina versus Basel. Guys, I still don't know how Basel made it this far. I am still in disbelief how Basel have done this because, guys, they haven't been great. I know they made the semifinals, but they just haven't been good. They just haven't... They, they're just somehow in this, you know. The group stage, they got they got second in the group, and, uh, and you know, Slovenian Bacha said they topped them. Then the round of 32, they played against, um, what was that, I think Travenspor. They honestly should have lost against Travenspor. They honestly should have lost that team. Um, I don't know how they managed to survive. And then the round of 16, they played against Slovenian Bacha so they rematch, and Slovenian Bacha so they were 2-0 up against them at, at their stadium. And, of course, they screwed up. They vaulted the lead, and obviously we know they did a comeback. And then in the quarterfinals, they drew the first leg at home, and they beat Nice away from home 2-1 in France. This isn't commendable, guys. This has absolutely been phenomenal for them because I believe all the second leg games, barring the game against Travensport, have been all on the uh, road, which has been crazy. This time around, though, the second leg is at home, which is very, very interesting. Key players to look out for for this team are obviously Matthew Hitz, the goalkeeper. He's a pretty short, uh, Marin Hitz, sorry. He's a pretty good goalkeeper. Obviously, you also have players like Ar Arno Kamas. You know, he's injured right now, though. Fabio Frey, Talu Jaka, I believe that's Gran Jaka's bro brother. I think you have other players like John uh, Zakiri, Liam Miller, you know, um, John Kevin Augustine. And the thing with this um, Basel team is that they were just somehow getting through. They had the motivation. They just had the passion and motivation. Then I'm looking at Fiorentina, man. This team is stacked. I mean, you have literally three strikers in the game. You have J Cabral, Luka Jovic, and Ikone. That is amazing stri quality. And that's amazing depth to have. Like, you can have three quality strikers. Come on. Then you have Amrabat as well. You got Dodo as well, who's a great right back from Shakhtar, I believe. And then, obviously, you also have players... Like, um, that, that have been amazing. And the thing with Fiorentina, as I said, is that what, what I was said with West Ham and Basel is that neither of these teams are really in contention to qualify for Europa League through the league. And so they're going to have to basically win this competition. You know, Basel currently, as things stand right now, Fiorentina is eighth right now in the Serie A. And Basel is currently, as things stand, uh, they are currently, let's see where they are, the Swiss Super League. They're currently sixth. Um, and it's not looking great for them. It's not looking great there. I believe that's not very good for them. And yeah, it's just not looking great for them, man. They just haven't been great. They just have been struggling in the Swiss Super League, man. Um, you know, and like I said, man, they're not in any position. Um, or actually they're fifth, sorry, not sixth. Um, but yeah, they're, 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 if, if they don't get, um, top four, they're not going to even be in Europe next season. They won't even be able to qualify for the Europa, European, um, round. So, they have to get top four, man, and it's very, very imperative they do because, like I said, man, they're just not looking great. And, you know, young boys have already won the league, and so they have a huge game this weekend, I believe. Um, who's their game against? I believe it's um their local derby, I believe. Um, it's a huge game. Let me see if I can find here on... Uh, let me see if I can find their matches here. Um, very, very interesting. So, yeah, they're playing against Zurich. Yeah, they're playing against Zurich this weekend. That's a huge, huge game for them because, you know, Zurich have not been... Um, that great this season. They've been they were struggling. Obviously, they played in the Europa League. You know, they won the Swiss uh, um, Swiss League last season. So I just think for Basel, man, I, I just feel like for me their focus should be more on the their domestic competition. But at the same time, though, if they do manage to win this, they'll be in Europa League next season. For Fiorentina, as I said, they just been in incredible form. They just been amazing. They're obviously in the Coppa Italia final as well, playing against Inter. Milan, and I just feel like for Fiorentina, man, this team is just stacked. I mean, like I said, man, they just have the quality players. Vincent, Vincenzo and Italiano has done a great job with this team, and they're just free-flowing. They just love to score goals. They had a rocky start to the season. You know, they came second in the group, and then obviously, um, you know, in the round of 32, they played against Braga. I actually thought they would lose to Braga, and then the round of 16, they played against Sivaspor. The quarterfinals played against Lech Bazan. And while, you know, they were the favorites against both of those teams, Lech Bazan put them a really really good effort and they managed to almost make the unpos impossible possible so i do think defensively there is a bit vulnerable vulnerabilities but then again though they were probably taking the second leg a bit you know they kind of rested the second they kind of took the second leg for granted just because like i said we were in a difficult position but you know i just think for fiorentina man the key is to win the first leg if they can win the first leg by three or more clear goals then i think they're the favorites if they do not 
then I would probably fancy Basel because they're going to find a way to win, especially at home and that kind of atmosphere. So it's going to be very interesting. So I personally have Fiorentina to advance, but it will be very interesting to see what happens, man. So like I said, guys, if you guys did enjoy this video, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Well, guys, if you're new on here, consider that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts, comment section below if you're watching this. And um, like I said, guys, make sure you guys check out my other podcasts in the description below. Because you become a member of the channel, turn on the notification bell to be notified. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.